So if you've already downloaded one of our 3D mockups, thank you so much. We hope you've been enjoying using it. But one thing that we have heard is that how long it takes Blender to render your 3D animation. Because let's face it, if we're trying to get something off to the client, we don't necessarily want to spend all night rendering that down. And if you're working to any sort of deadline, that can be quite stressful. So this technique is going to save you, I would say, roughly about 70 to 80% of the time. So if we were going to render a video of this shot with the garment rotating like that, it's going to have to go through and render every single frame. And what you'll notice is that background is going to stay the same every time. I mean, you've got a bit of light reflection down there, but you really can't see the garment in it, so it's not going to be an issue. So the first thing that I would suggest we do is create a PNG sequence of the hoodie rotating, and then we're just going to create a static PNG of the background. Let's say that we wanted to make a story. So we can go over to the printer icon here and we can go to 1080 by 1920. So we've got that as like a story size for Instagram. Let's say we wanted to go in a little bit closer as well. We could choose to use a different camera. So let's go for camera close. So maybe it's a bit too close. So we're just going to have to move that camera back a little bit further to, I would say, about, about there. Let's just have a look at that. Perfect. So let's say this is the render that we want to bounce down. We've got obviously these rocks in the background, which I think are really nice, and I want to keep those. So let's go ahead and just render the background. So what we want to do is go over to the model. So we want to switch these two icons off. We could just leave that eye icon on because that's just so we can see it. But this little camera icon is what's going to be rendered. So if we had that switched on, it would still render with the hoodie in shot. So now we've just got the background. And then if we go to render and then render image. So you'll see it's taking its time to go through that as we talk. This is still on the first square. And I'm on an M1 Mac. So, you know, it's, it's okay. It's got, it's got quite a lot of guts. But if you're working on something like a laptop, you could expect this to take a little bit longer. And that's just the way it is with 3D. So we're on to the second square now, and it's going to go through and render that. But if you can imagine, if we're doing this as a video, it would have to do this every single time for every single frame. And we've got 180 frames here to render. So there's no point in rendering this background 180 times. So if you were working on like a really high spec computer, then you'd probably render that in like three minutes. But I'm on a Mac M1. It's fairly gutsy, but you know, it's taking its time to render this. And I don't want to do that 180 times. And when I could just do it once and put a PNG sequence of the hoodie rotating on a transparent background behind it. And you'll see what I mean about that in a sec. So that's all finished rendering now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and save that to my desktop. I'm just going to call it background. So that's that done. That's the first stage done. So you can see we've got it here nice high definition image all ready to go now what we want to do is the opposite we want to flip this so we want to go and switch our hoodie back on but this time we want to switch the background off so then we want to come down to scene and instead of switching that off like that that will switch off everything so that'll switch the lights off as well we don't want that we want to keep those on so keep that enabled but go down to room and switch that off so now we want to go ahead and make sure that we've got everything set up properly for this so the first thing we want to do is go down to film and make sure that we've got transparent selected down here so make sure you've got that switched on then we want to go and check our sizes so if we go to this little printer icon we've got 1920 by 1080 we could leave it like that or because we don't want to waste any time going around the edges let's just change that to 1080 as well so that's a square and then I'm just going to bring that camera back in as well. So it fills the whole frame. Let's see how we get on with that. A little bit more. Okay, that should be good. So that is going to be my render. Then we want to go and click on this little printer icon again. Make sure we're still in here. And you'll see that we've got file format set to PNG. We want to keep it like that. We don't want to change this to an MP4 or a JPEG or anything because those wouldn't be on a transparent background. So now if we go along to the camera icon, you'll see that down here in render, we've got a few options that we can play around with. So if we wanted to really speed that up, you'll see that we've got some options here on our site for rendering that down. So if you wanted something that was like low quality, get it done quite quickly, and you're in a rush, then these are the settings that we'd recommend. So we've got 350 at the top, and then we've got denoise enabled. So if we'd switch that on, let's go for the really fast one. 
and then we'll go to max samples and change that from 1000 to 350. So now we've got everything set up, we want to go and render animation. So we click render and go to animation and that's going to go through and do everything apart from the background because like I said earlier, if we were rendering all this background again and again and again, it's a complete waste of time. We don't need to do that. So already there you go, it's just done the first one and that was in the space of a couple of seconds. So you can see here, we've got estimated round seven. It keeps jumping between seven to 12 minutes for it to do the entire thing. That is considerably quicker than overnight, for example. So hopefully this will shave a lot of time off for you guys. I just wanna go through and show you some other options as well while we're just waiting for that to render. So you'll see here, we've got the recommended render settings for medium quality as well. So you can see that the difference here is that we've got the denoise switched off and you can see that max samples has gone up to 550. So that'd be something good if you were going for like Instagram. So don't forget that Instagram's always gonna compress stuff. So if you wanted to get something churned out quite quickly, I'd go for either 350 or 550 because there's no point spending ages rendering something that's only going to get compressed by Instagram. And then you've got the high quality, and this is something that you'd want for like billboards or whatever it is you're doing that's like a really nice high performance piece. And you can see here that we've got max sample set to 750 and denoises are also switched off. So to save waiting for all of these to go through, I'm going to use an old render sequence that I've already made because I've created this before. So in this folder here, you'll see that we've got all these different statics. And when these are all stitched together, they'll make the perfect smooth sequence. So the next thing we want to do is go into Premiere Pro. So you could even do this on Photoshop as like a GIF, perhaps. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it that way because this is a much nicer way to work. But if you don't have Premiere Pro, that could be a backup for you. But if you do have Premiere Pro and an Adobe account, then I would recommend doing it this way. Or maybe use After Effects, whatever your preference. So let's just call this Hoodie BG, why not? And then we're going to click Create. So when Premiere Pro opens up, you'll see this screen. What we want to do is go over to here where it says Import Media to start. Right click on that and then go to New Item and then Sequence. And then these are the options that I'm going for. So I'm just going to use that one. Click on this. And then you'll notice that this is the default, comes in on landscape. I want to switch that round. So I'm going to go sequence settings. And then here we've got 1920 by 1080. We want to flip that. So we'll go 1080 by 1920 and then click OK. And then we want to go and get that background that we created earlier. And we're going to go and drop that in. We can make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So another thing you can use as well is this little loop back play button. If you can't see that, go over here to the button editor and you'll see that it is here. So you just want to go and drag that down. I've already got it, so I don't need to drag that down. But I'm going to make sure that that's selected. And then when I've got my sequence rolling, it will just go backward. It will go back to the start and continue that loop. So the next thing that I want to do is go and import that sequence of the hoodie that I created. So I'm going to go to import just 0, 0, 0, 0 the first one on its own. And then I'm gonna go down here and click show options and then make sure the image sequence is checked and that's gonna bring everything in from this sequence. So import, drag that in, and then I wanna adjust the background so it's the same time. And now I've got that all ready to go in a fraction of the time. It didn't take a whole day. It was going to take roughly, looking at what it was estimated, it was going to take about 12 minutes. And also this was rendered at the lowest quality as well, which hasn't even been rendered here. So if we go to render in to out, you'll see the full quality. And that is absolutely perfect for me. If I wanted to adjust the speed, I could as well. So I can go onto that and I can right click and go to speed duration and I can change that to be twice the speed by going to 200. And then I just want to adjust my background to be the same time. Hit play and that's gonna rotate at twice the speed now. If you then wanted to do some other stuff with it, you could also add in a few keyframes as well to make it a bit more interesting and dynamic. So for example, what you could do is get your cursor, just have it anywhere you like, make sure the background is selected and then we're gonna go and click scale. So that's gonna put a keyframe in there. It's gonna drag that one over to the start. And then over here, by typing in, it's gonna create another keyframe. So I'm gonna set that to onto 120. So that's gonna zoom in slightly. And then that one, I'm gonna drag right over to here. 
So this way it looks so good on a looping background, but if you just wanted to do like a teaser of something just rotating once, this will work quite nicely. So you could have ease in on the final frame if you wanted to, and that is now going to look like this. So you've got the background going in and out, which is quite nice. And what I quite like about that is it just gives it that dynamic feel that you wouldn't necessarily get if you were rendering that in Blender as a video. You'd have to then do the ease in, ease out with all the different parameters, but you can create, you can control these in a separate way, which is quite nice. So another good thing about this is that you could add some branding in there, perhaps in the background, or you could switch up the background if you didn't even want it on. So you can go ahead and click that eye icon and that will hide it temporarily. We can nudge that up one and we could go and stick a logo in there, perhaps in the background. So you could scale that down to the size that you wanted, for example, and you could just have something like that, or you could have something that animates across, for example, as this rotates. So you then want to go to position, um, move it all the way over to the side, click your first keyframe, drag that one over to the start, and then drag it over to here, to the other side for it to be finished, and then drag that keyframe over there. And then you've got something like that. So this is another benefit to doing it this way with a PNG sequence. So you're not just relying on that one render that you've got, and then you've got to spend another night rendering it all over again. So the background for this is lovely, but it takes a while to render. And don't forget that we've got other backgrounds in this mock-up as well. At the moment, we've got the rocky one. We could go and make a render of a different room. So we could go to, we could change the ground as well. We could change that with it's just water. We could turn the water off. So it's just rock. Or we can go to the other view, switch that room with the rocks off and switch the metal floor on. But I'm going to zoom out a little bit on this one. So let's go and use a different camera and we'll get that bit in the bottom in as well. So let's go and render this as just an image and this will give us something else to play with. So we've got a different asset here to work with. We can make the mock-up look slightly different. And once again, it saves you having to render this through 180 times with the same background. You've got that flexibility to do it however you like. And another thing while this is rendering is just to always try and think about what size you're gonna need this for as well. So for example, if you're posting something on Instagram, like I said before, it's gonna get compressed. So don't go any bigger than 1080 because it's not necessary. Um, if you're gonna do something like a little GIF on a product page, chances are that's gonna be quite small. So if it's like 400 by 400 pixels, render it at that size and that saves so much time with the render process. So once you've got that how you want, the only thing left to do is to export it. Save it to my desktop, that's fine. And then format, we wanna make sure that that is an H.264, which is gonna be an MP4. And then all we have to do is click export. And that is all we need to do. So the idea of working in this way is to save you a huge amount of time, give you more flexibility with the post edit, and just have a better time working with it in general with the ability to switch up the different views and the different types of angles and backgrounds and whatever. So I hope this has been useful to you. Head on over and give us a like on Instagram and a follow on YouTube. Also go and check out Future Deconstruction on Instagram. There's a link in the description to go and check out his work. He's the guy who's done all the technical build for this. And we've got many more 3D mockups on the way. And if you haven't seen our 3D mockups before, then feel free to go and have a little look on our site. We've got plenty for you to have a little look at. And any questions, drop them in the comments. Be more than happy to work through those and help you as best we can. And in the meantime, really appreciate your support. And thank you very much for taking the time. Check this out. We hope you enjoy using our products.